Um, I've already done a tutorial on one method you can use to turn a stick input into eight directions um, for like use with um, a puppet or something like that so that you can only walk in in one of the eight directions but this is a little different um, here we want to kind of turn those directions into button as if as if buttons were being held so I've got all these outputs and these outputs will send um, a powered thing uh, will send a signal when I'm not pushing anything on the stick then the center one is sending a signal and if I push up then you can barely see it but when I push up then the top one is sending a signal and when I go up right the top right one is is sending a signal cool so first thing we need is a controller sensor and you don't need these wires and put it into remote controllable which means I don't have to go into play mode and possess an object or a puppet or whatever I can just um, it will always send out the signals no matter what so if I just split that with a splitter so I'm getting the right stick local which means um, the normal right stick is relative to the camera so if I use the right stick pointing up here it will be different to if I was looking over here and pu pushing up it will give different values but then if we go local then it will just give us that's minus one down is plus one and so on uh, no matter where your your angles no matter where you're looking um, Cool, so we've got that, and I'll just put that through a number displayer so you can see what that's given us. Uh, like that. So we've got X and then Y. So as I'm pushing up, Y is giving us negative, and down is positive, and then pushing left and right. So it's fairly easy to understand. Uh, but we want to kind of mess with this these values uh, with a calculator so the calculator uh, because this is a fat wire you can see it's lots of little wires in one braided cable kind of thing um, each value will be affected by this um, calculator and then what comes out the other side the result will be affected and now let's add the calculator Put the right stick in there so we want to round it so now when we're nearer the middle then it'll go to zero when we're further away from the middle it'll go to minus one or plus one so then we put the result in there and play time so now i'm just pushing up up to if i go beyond 50 percent then it'll go to minus one and down and so on so i'm just getting plus ones or minus ones and zeros so now we can use that a little easier and wire that into there uh, getting a signal manipulator because over here we can turn instead of it being minus one to plus one it, we can just shrink it down into zero to one um, and then we can split it to see what that does so now um, when I'm not holding it, it's 50%, 50%, and then when I push up, it's zero, down is one, and left and right like that. And now we can use that with timelines. So timelines have this cool thing where, uh, so we've got this X value, and we can plug it straight into the playhead. And if we pin that to the screen, so this is the X value. And it's a 50% sending 50% to the playhead, so it's going to 50% of the timeline. And then if we look left, then it's going to zero, so this is going to 0% of the timeline and 100%. So then we can use the you put logic on here that only activates in certain parts of the timeline, and so will only activate when uh, the X uh, of the stick is at certain points. And we'll do the same for y down here so now we have that and we have that 
and as we like look around it's it's mimicking what we're doing with our sticks and if we um, skip that do that now we we're getting like a one-to-one -one thing of uh, what the right stick is doing next we want to actually have um, set up our nodes for the different directions and these will all be going out um, so that when we close it we have this little nub on the side so if we actually name that so this would be pointing right so you can use UI arrow uh, east there you go um, and you can find out um, all those icon codes by going to tapjars.com slash icons with a nice kind of searchable page um, and I won't I won't do the names for all of them but I'll just set these up quickly right so these aren't going to send anything though so we've got all those as separate outputs as if they were buttons but they weren't, aren't actually sending anything so um, when we're pushing this is the X so if I push left and right uh, so this is this area is left and that area is right so let's uh, add a switch and we'll put it into uh, beats mode which means we can get these nice uh, positions to snap to so we've got a switch and we can just plug that into all of the left kind of directions like that and we'll have one for the right uh, there and there and then we'll have one for the whole of the center uh, we'll just grab that first so that would be the whole middle column so there's this um, this thing that happens though when you push all the way to the right it's going to 100% of the timeline now the playhead actually activates things that are just to the right of it so when you're right at the end it's actually got nothing to activate but you can use this trick where you grab the end of it and just push it beyond and if you drag the timeline out timeline out you can see uh, that it's going beyond the end of the timeline and now when you keep pushing right that's this gadget is still to the right of that playhead so now you can still activate things that are right at the end um, so now if I unpin that so now we've got left and middle and right and that was fine but then we only want one of these three uh, d depending on which one is which ones are activated like the top row or the middle row or the bottom row to be able to send anything out and for that we can just turn them all off and turn on the ones we want to send a signal so if we turn that off uh, now we can use a keyframe to turn this will be going up I think and then another one another one right so then this will be the middle row this will be bottom row so this one is sending a signal out to these nodes this one is letting signals through the nodes um, and let's just uh, go in here drag them out to the right points cool so if we pin that then I'm going right and left and up and down oh the down one isn't working because of that problem again so let's just drag that on the end and now it's working and then top left top right bottom, bottom right and bottom left and the center just works fine so uh, then you can like label these up and use these outputs uh, for anything you like uh, yeah so if you just want to turn this turn the stick into just a regular um, just an eight directional stick value then you can just do that basically um, but then if you want to split those out into all the eight directions and the center then you can do this uh, you can see the I'm using the right stick 
as the talked about here. Um, and if I push it up and then round to the right and then left, then it will do a thing. And if I do it fast enough, hey, and then if I do this one, it does a different one. If I take like forever to do it, it will just reset and then it won't do it. Yay. So kind of like um, if anyone was playing played Skate, uh, a, uh, a skateboarding game, where you do this with the right stick and it does like a kickflip or whatever, depending on the shape you make. But there was also um, a game um, that someone made where a wizard kind of um, waved his wand as you moved the right stick. And then it, if you did the right shape, then it would um, trigger some effect, which is pretty cool. And someone was asking how that could be done. Um, and there are t kind of two parts to it. There's the making the stick into discrete like parts. So we've got up and top right, top left and so on. And one for the center. Um, that's done with some logic in here. Uh, then I like change it a bit and put it into here. This is uh, just like my um, cheat code code input um, logic that I've uh, already made a tutorial for, so I won't cover it again. But that's the basic idea. You have the uh, when it's allowed, then it will go through and increase this counter. When it's disallowed. Uh, and you use that angle or whatever, or button or however, whatever signal it's receiving, then it will go and reset this counter. And the counter drives this. So as you go along, different ones, keyframes allow different ones and disallow different ones uh, as you go through it. Um, when it gets to here, it just sends out a signal out the other side to play the uh, timeline, which is the little text display. Um, here though, there's this extra feature. So um, when you play, oh, you can't see the thing anymore. Let me find it. Clock that there. Um, so when you play, um, sometimes you don't. Uh, you're not through like with this bit here. Often you go through that so fast. It doesn't always register that uh, you are in the center, so um, so that being part of the requirement um, is kind of problematic for the player. So instead of making that required, like these green ones, just make it it's required to be correct, and it isn't considered incorrect. Everything else is considered incorrect, and will reset things. But now I've got this other keyframe which um, just turns off the incorrect. So now this one, which is for, if I do look at that one, circle, which is the center. So while it's in the center, it's just completely ignored during this part. So it just ignores these um, angles and looks at these angles. So it looks for up and then right and then left. Uh, ignore it and when it's waiting for right it ignores top right because you can like look up and then round to the right um, but anything else if you go up and then left then it will still uh, reset things uh, and there's a little timer that gets started after you you can get into position and just hold it there as long as you want but then once you get to the second position you have to like complete the thing otherwise it will reset itself. Um, that's the basic idea of how that stuff works. And you can check out the uh, other tutorial um, to find out details. I'd like to thank Woodsense, Multimoo, Jason AC and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration and I'll see you in the next one.